to one and all present here. I am Vidhi Rohia and I will be your host for this evening. It gives me great pleasure to welcome Dr. Vivek Ahuja, Associate Director, PhD Programs and in charge of Alumni Regis Registry Relations Office. making this exciting session today. I would like to thank our wonderful alumni today, uh, Swayam and Deepak, for joining us today to deliver an exciting talk on sustainability and pollution. As a first step towards building a strategic partnership with our alumni, we have initiated our alumni interactive series. As a knowledge sharing platform with the aim to host a number of interactive sessions with the alumni who are doing wonders in their respective fields. This is our inaugural session of the alumni interaction series and we are fortunate to host this session on a topic that is a need of the you all have been hearing the impact of commercialization on the environment research in this area establishes that commercialization is conducive to reduced environmental problems. in light of this the relationship between entrepreneurship and sustainability assumes a lot of importance in the presence of high levels of creativity and innovation Today, we are going to learn about an organization that's taking creative steps towards sustainability and conflict. Welcome, Swayam and Deepak. It's a great pleasure to host you today for something we are taking immense pride in. We look forward to learning from both. Thanks so much. Thank you, sir. We wish you the very best. It is indeed a great pleasure to welcome our alumni, Swayam Oshi and Deepak Ramakrishna. So Swayam Doshi is a part of our class of 2018 and uh, he did his master's in ESCP, uh, Marketing and Digital Media. Uh, he, he then went on to work for the Future Group. Uh, afterwards, he co-founded Suspire along with Deepak in the year 2021. Deepak Ramakrishna is also a part of our batch of 2018 in BBA. Uh, he worked for EY for three years and then he co-founded Suspire along with Swayam in the year 2021. Thank you so much for accepting our invitation and we look forward to an enriching session this evening. Over to you. Firstly, thank you so much for the introduction. Really, really appreciate it. And um, yeah, thank you for having us, you know. Uh, thank you, Flame University, for actually giving us this opportunity to come out and talk to everybody about what we're trying to get out. And at the same time, you know, um, enrich a few, few people to actually take the path that is currently untrodden and actually have some people, you know, bring up innovative solutions within the space that we're currently working on. Um, just, just to, you know, introduce sustainability and what we're trying to get at. Um, I guess, you know, this to actually explain this on the whole, we could take a historical point of view and talk about the past 40 years of the fashion industry. So uh, if you look at the 1980s, an average consumer used to buy about 10 pieces of clothing a year at an average price of about $20 for those 10 pieces of clothing. Um, enter the 1990s, and that same 10 products would cost, I mean, would come down by about one-tenth of the total price to about $2. And the biggest cause of that was globalization. People in the US started to you know, realize that you could make your products much cheaper in, in countries like India, uh, Bangladesh, China, and so on and so forth. And the primary reason for that was, you know, no labor laws, cheap labor, bonded labor, child labor, very, very shoddy factories with no care for the, the environment whatsoever. So, um, and, and of course, the use of synthetic fibers, which actually came in during the time because people were looking for a cheaper material, which could actually serve the purpose of, you know, use and throw uh, garment. Um, this coupled with the obvious, you know, drop in prices, people started to, you know, start using this buzzword called fast fashion, wherein you would see a certain trend um, that comes up on a fashion show or a ramp walk and you say, hey, I want that as well, but I'm not willing to pay those exorbitant fees for it because I don't have the means to, you know, afford that. So what they would do is they'd copy it with the cheapest available materials possible uh, to get that same piece in about 10,000 pieces. And what tends to happen is, you, you sell only maybe 20 to 30% of that. And the, the rest, the 70%, either ends up being incinerated or in a landfill, just you know, capturing carbon over time. So Suspire was actually born out of the need to bring in checks and to understand which 
materials actually could be classed as something that is biodegradable or you know a lot more friendlier to the environment we started the whole concept with it being you know a, a fashion driven uh, marketplace but then we realized more and more products are cropping up with the additional need to actually use animals as a testing uh, place of testing or you know to enhance beauty per se and we realized that you know animals need not be part of this whole production process wherein you know we're living that 5 or 10 minutes of instant pleasure and you know we can we obviously have a lot of ways that we can process or produce these products without the intervention of animals being there so what we curated is this this marketplace for a person to actually live or lead a conscious lifestyle you know products that are made out of materials that are completely natural uh, 100% sustainable in in terms of what they're made of and as well as in terms of the people that actually create it people have accountability in the amount of money that they actually earning from these factories and you know it's an ethical complete et completely ethical supply chain um when prior to us actually entering this marketplace we realized that there was a lot of problems on either side of the spectrum now if you look at on the supplier side um well a lot of brands today are actually cropping up with the whole message of sustainability you know using reusable packaging uh you know providing you with healthcare benefits from actually natural resources rather than synthetic ones but with that comes an additional need to market yourself as as you know one of a kind unique and so on and so forth and this obviously drives up your cost and with there being so many products in the market today the the the, the task of actually getting yourself apart is you know a herculean task within itself so what we decided was we create a marketplace wherein um these you know in indian indigenous producers are actually given a platform where they can showcase themselves and they're given that opportunity to actually uh um, you know reach those masses that they haven't been able to tackle so far and for our consumers we realize that sustainability though it's a word right now that's picking up is very very expensive and just because you know and 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 most of this is attributable to the fact that the materials that are used aren't produced in numbers because well there is an acceptance for it as of yet and due to this the price tends to come up the basic you know sense of economics you know if if your demand is high your supply goes up and so on and so forth and with this came this task of actually providing uh consumers with uh you know an economical solution while also being eco friendly so somewhere down the line we decided that we would serve both tasks to first create a community of like minded uh consumers who actually do care in the do, do care about the environment as well as what we wear or you know you know just take those small little actions or steps that could potentially bring about a lot you know a big change when a lot of people do start to be repeating them over time and yeah that that's why suspire was born um just talking about as to how this came about and what we're doing currently so we've been active for the past 5 months uh we have about 32 brands on our marketplace currently we are looking at uh categories such as apparel accessories and cosmetics as of right now all being 100% vegan we are soon to you know foray into the categories of personal care stationery uh kitchen uh, that that includes you know bed linen uh you know your table runners and also uh, we are soon to segment into food as well um just going to hand over to 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 swayam just to talk about how we're benefiting the consumers as well as the suppliers and what we actually stand to do with our go to market strategy So yeah, I think we have a pre quick presentation. Deepak, we'll just take them to the presentation first. Oh, while we're yeah. talking about that. Um, yeah, I think we have a quick video to show before. If if uh, the host could just change the slide, please. Hello. Yeah. Uh, can you actually increase the volume? There's the sound in this video. Sir? So you can't seem to hear the sound. If you could please just increase the sound.
Yep, so uh, that's a bit of our business and how we're trying to basically build values around, um, you know, what we're doing and actually, you know, set a framework of sorts, you know, in the way we uh, onboard our brands and as, you know, uh, in, enlighten them on our uh, model ethics as well. And I hope that they actually follow it uh, to the T with us as well. Um, just moving on to the next slide, uh, which actually talks about the challenges, which I, or, or the problem, okay. Um, let's just go on to the problem statement again. I spoke about the problem statement that was uh, to do with, the fashion industry, but when it comes to cosmetics, there's an equally, you know, laden uh, exploit exploitation of labor that does exist within the the market as well as for the producers. And uh, with the amount of single-use plastic that's actually uh, in play, there's a lot of pollution that comes out of it as well. And so, what we are trying to do is actually tie up with brands that you know stand for the whole uh, realm of eco-friendly products, as well as you know natural products which don't use any synthetic uh, solutions or any chemicals for that matter, so that you are using your natural beauty at the end of the day. Um, you know, you would have come across a newspaper article which actually talked about microplastics being um, found in the blood for the first time. And I guess this also, you know, boils down to the fact of the whole, uh, the whole process of biomagnification, where plastic tends to end up in, in our oceans, which are then eaten by fish, which eventually are eaten by humans, and that's how it actually gets in. So we're trying to, you know, reduce the burden of, um, you know, uh, actually in introducing plastic into the market uh, anymore and actually provide eco-friendly, you know, alternatives to it so that we can actually uh, you know, provide a more robust as well as you know, a sustainable future for what we're actually providing. Um, yep, if you could just go to the next slide. Yeah, um, just talking about the challenges again, uh, merchants have a really high customer retention and acquisition cost. There's an expensive marketing, but no consumer base. And obviously this organized marketing due to multiple platforms. On the consumer's end, uh, the price of sustainable organic commodities are extremely expensive and there are no easy alternative for discounts. Uh, no one is really aware of the brands that do exist within the sustainable marketplace or, or the sustainable industry on the, on the whole, except for a few brands that would have cropped up, you know, seven to eight years ago, uh, way ahead of the curve and, um, you know, have been using a lot of their money or the spend towards actually retargeting those people that they've actually had as customers and actually brought on a loyal customer base over time. And existing reward pro uh, programs actually lack a fair and transparent reporting system, which is the need of the art to actually understand where your money is allocated to and what it's actually doing for you. 
Um, if you just go to the next slide. Yeah, so what, what if consumers could have a service that rewards them against every purchase, a service that finds you the best discounted rates and a fair and uh, transparent rewarding system. And for the system, I mean, the, uh, the suppliers on the other hand, a digitized solution that helps reduce customer acquisition and retention cost, a service to actually bring you, uh, you know, an eco-conscious community that you could actually market to and access to multiple international markets over time. Next slide, please. Yeah, so we are Suspire, the sustainable empire, and we've come about to change the ways people consume, reduce waste, as, uh, and obviously, you know, be more considerate about the environment that, that we live in. Um, so we were born with this whole concept of five core values, which I will come to on the next slide. Um, if, if you could just change the slide. There we go. Um, so we were born with five core values. And now these, these values are something that we hold completely true to our uh, organization, as well as with every action that we do do. Um, so we have these five basically include the environment, materials, cruelty free and vegan, transparency and commitment. Now, when I talk about the environment, this boils down to the, the packaging material that we do use. As of right now, we're using brown craft paper bags as a means of our, you know, uh, packaging so that it's something that can be reused for multiple errands. You can actually use it to, you know, run a grocery, uh, run or so on and so forth. And what we're trying to do is limit the amount of emission that's actually created because of the packaging or the transportation that we actually enlist. Um, over time, what we are trying to do is actually sequester carbon by using uh, carbon avoidance projects, uh, actually, you know, uh, you know, investing in, in, these, uh, in these projects. And at the same time, also looking at greener ways that we could actually uh, provide packaging. So uh, there's this company that we're trying to tie up with, which uses reusable packaging, wherein uh, once a you know, product is delivered to a consumer, you can scan a QR code and your packaging is actually returned back to the company so that it can be sanitized and reused within the loop. In terms of materials, this mostly boils down to our apparel uh, brands that we do on board. So as of right now, we're using five auditable uh, you know, materials which are commonly available. Uh, these are organic cotton, hemp, bamboo, tensile, and linen. Um, another clearly demarcative uh, you know, tool for us or solution for us as to why we actually went with these five, uh, you know, it's, it's not very water intensive. It's clearly audit auditable through the number of certifications that you could actually get uh, for these uh, materials and the actual use of it. And moreover, it is completely biodegradable. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, we believe that, you know, that an animal shouldn't really face the brunt of one's beauty or some, you know, wearing something a bit more comfortable. And so our you know, marketplace is 100% cruelty free as well as 100% vegan. And um, this also boils down to the gray areas where some people tend to ask us whether, you know, some things like beeswax are, or honey are actually con considered to be vegan. And we're quite stern in our, you know, answer that anything that is animal derived or is a substitute product. I mean, sorry, isn't. Uh, I'm so sorry about that. Uh, yeah, or is a derivative that is actually derived from an animal uh, is centrally used on any of the product that we do produce. Yeah, I think Sampat sir, if you could, uh, I think this is so it's the mic on your end. If you could please. Can you go on to the next slide, please? Oh, there we go. Um, so while while we are, you know, having while, while we do get on a lot of uh, brands onto our marketplace, there's this whole concept of greenwashing that has come about with the whole onset of sustainability into the market. And um, well, the whole premise of uh, greenwashing is to actually show that your product is sustainable when it isn't. And to counteract this, what we are doing with our brands is actually, you know, uh, auditing each of the claims that they are making about their products. And this is through the numerous questionnaires that we do send them as well as to understand what their production actually, you know, entails, how many people work for them, how many of them are women, uh, are they actually given fair wages? Um, you know, uh, are, are they given any incentives like healthcare or any other incentives for that matter? Um, when it comes to commitment, uh, this is something that we, we really, really do believe in. And it's something that we hold at the central as a central pillar of our organization. And um, this actually stemmed from the fact that when me and Swayam were initially talking about uh, the concept of sustainability and uh, what we would do we have, realized that each of our actions do have an opposite reaction on the environment if it isn't uh, positively impacted for it. 
And we felt that, you know, shopping is something that is so mainstream that, you know, it's instilled in us that we do end up buying something or the other on a, on a weekly basis or maybe even a monthly basis for that matter. And if we could offset that purchase by actually planting a tree or planting a coral tile in the Indian Ocean, then it would, you know, uh, serve a dual factor. A person feels enlightened or actually happy that they actually are doing something for the environment. And at the same time, we actually are, you know, providing an adequate uh, increase to the carbon bank that also already exists. Now. And the way we do this is uh, we have our NGO partners, that is Say Trees in Bangalore and Coastal Impact based out of Goa. Uh, who we basically partnered up with to plant the trees and the coral tiles uh, for us in, in our consumers' names. And over time, as in when your tree grows or your coral tile grows, and it's almost about time to actually push it out of the coral reef, we provide you routine updates in terms of pictures so that you can see the tree or the coral tile grow as you know you keep shopping or as you keep or, or as time goes on for that matter. Yep, uh, if we could just go on to the next slide. Yeah, I'll take this on. Um, and also, since you want to give more time to the Q&A, we'll just run through the next slides real quick. Um, so yeah, just talk about the benefits for the consumers as well as for the merchants. For the consumers, of course, since uh, it's an e-commerce driven industry, we are looking to give huge uh, discounts and coupons to the consumers. And we believe that that's something that is going to drive sales. So that's a big benefit to the consumers. And not only do they get the coupons uh, as, a, as a form of reward, but we're also rewarding them with uh, impact points through and, and, and you know planting trees and coral tiles on their behalf, which they can have for, for the remainder of their lives and something in their name. Um, we're giving them a transparent, ethical and vegan uh, you know, solutions for products across categories right at their doorstep. And we're a one-stop shop for everything sustainable and eco-friendly. As Deepak mentioned, so far we've, um, you know, in the past few months, you've had fashion accessories and cosmetics only. But just recently, uh, earlier this week, we've onboarded home decor, we've onboarded stationery, and we've onboarded, uh, you know, other, uh, uh, I think, personal care as well. And we look into onboard industries like food and, you know, widen our range and widen the range for, uh, for the consumers as well. Um, a benefit for the merchants, since we're nothing without the brands that we have on our platform, we're, gonna, we're running brand-specific ads to engage with the users. These are ads designed and, uh, you know, in include products of the brands, uh, themselves and this is this helps them you know build a community for themselves as well as create more brand awareness for the brand that that we sort of uh, push up push out as well um you know we're trying to create an eco-conscious community for for them as well as well as, as well as for us which helps them build their brand value and also increases footfall for them on their platform and creates more awareness for their for the particular brand as well um yeah if you go on to the next slide please so in terms of our demographics, we're targeting an age range of uh, from 18 years to all the way to 50 years. Um, so far, what we've observed and what we've learned is women are our main audience uh, since the categories we've had so far include fashion and beauty. Um, and we're targeting day one and day two cities since these are the cities that we're seeing that people are more aware of, aware about sustainability and also have that knowledge and, and have that sort of income power as well. Income groups, we're looking at anywhere about more than 35,000 and targeting upper middle class and above. This is mainly because sustainability, as you all know, comes at a price. It is not very affordable to everyone. However, we do want to change that and we're doing our best in order to create that awareness. And then of course, create that demand so that supply as well becomes a lot easier and, and it's more affordable. The buying habits we're seeking are seeking timeless styles and seeking investment pieces. Um, if you go on to the next slide, please. Yeah, just quickly gonna go through the go-to-market strategy we had so far. We're looking to raise our offline presence. When, we, when, you, when I mean offline presence, I mean pop-up booths, uh, you know, um, be active on flea markets and just have certain offline spaces where we see um, our, our target audience engaging and interacting. So we're looking to do that real soon. Um, you know, there's this festival at the end of the month called Culture Chutney, which is happening in Pune itself. So for everyone in Flame who's there currently, uh, do catch us there if, if you know, if, if, if y'all can. And we'll definitely love to sort of engage and interact with you guys there if you, if you can just find us there. Um, when it comes to celebrity endorsements, we're looking, we're looking to find the right celebrity. I think that's, that's a bigger key for us to identify who that particular celebrity and influencer is, who is vegan, who is, you know, in the whole sustainable space, who helps create that awareness and education about sustainability as such, and not just find any celebrity who has a, you know, higher following. Um, when it comes to social media, we're active on various platforms, all the way from Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Pinterest, YouTube. Um, you know, you name it and we're there. We're looking to get into Reddit as well very soon. 
So we have different content strategies for each of these social media platforms, and we're looking to sort of build on various campaigns and identify what works best for for that particular platform. Um, and and of course, paid search and SEO is something that we're also doing in additional marketing. We're we're active on Google Ads. We're we're running you know various um, shopping ads, and we're running display ads, and various. when we're making sure that all our all our content and on our blog and on our website as well is is you know well versed with the whole SEO guidelines that we're looking to follow as well. In terms of public relations, we're looking to, we've been approached by a lot of magazines and we've been approached by a lot of these publications to sort of, you know, do paid, paid PR. So far, we haven't had, you know, had allocated the budget for that, but looking to do that and looking to identify the right sort of PR, uh, you know, who can help us go to the next step and help us build that awareness. If you go to the next slide, please. Yeah, so, so far for advertising, our main focus is to you know, um, enable more users to add to their cart and to also raise more brand awareness. So I think this is something that's been a challenge for us so far, and something that we've sort of well versed with and well prepared to do is we have to raise awareness and we have to sort of uh, you know shoot out more educative, informative content for people to be more aware of what sustainability is, what Aspire as a brand is doing, and how you know their purchasing by purchasing decisions eventually do affect planet earth and how it can be you know how there are better alternatives to that as well i think that's that's one of the biggest focus that we have as a brand at least in this initial sort of year maybe where we want to spread more awareness about what aspire is doing in terms of our budgeting we're looking at a division of roughly 75 to 25 um 75 percent digital versus 25 percent physical as i spoke our physical events are something like pop-ups and uh, flea markets we want to you want to be part of um yeah so as i spoke about social media with but Again, just to reiterate on that, we're trying to create more awareness, and um, we so we have up to nine blogs, which again uh, go back to our whole, our whole objective of creating more awareness. We have blogs starting all the way from what makes something sustainable to why use organic cotton versus normal cotton, um, various various such blogs. How tree plantations help planet, how coral tiles are helping helping us. So various in, informative, educative blogs like that is is what we're working on to create more content as well. We go on to the next slide, please. Yeah, these are just examples of how um, you know our dashboard looks looks like on our website. When you create a, when you create an account with us and you shop, you create more points, more impact points. With those impact points is when we help you plant your trees and help you plant your coral tiles as well. Uh, let's go to the next slide again, please. This is an example of how your coral reef would look like once you know once you shop more and once you create uh, more loyalty points for yourself, and we help you plant plant those on our behalf. Um, yeah, I think uh, we'll leave. I think that's about it. If you go to the next step, please. Yeah, we we'll leave the floor open to any questions you may, you guys may have, and uh, yeah, we we'll take it on from there. Thank you. Am I audible? Very faintly, but yes. Uh, is it better now? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, so my question here is that uh, all of us have such an interesting ideas coming up for new business ventures. So uh, how do you convert these ideas into actual business plan? And uh, how has your journey been from an abstract idea to an actual business plan? Is what I'm very interested in. Sorry, Deepak, did you get that? Because I couldn't hear the... I, I didn't. I'm so sorry. Could you please repeat that? I'm so sorry. Uh, guys, can you hear me? Hi, this is Chetan from FSB 1214. If I heard the lady right, what she was trying to ask you is that she just wants to ask you, how do you actually convert an idea to an actual business? That was her question. All right. Awesome. Okay, cool. Um, I guess in, the, in this sense, uh, to be too, okay, just, just to give hello. you a oh, Hello. Hi. Can you hear? Yes, I can. Yep. What's the question audible? Um, it, it would be great if you could repeat that. If it repeat it, that's okay. Okay, sir. So my question here is that uh, all of us have. Uh, 
Uh, okay, sir. So all of us have different ideas meeting us, and so I want to understand how do you take these abstract ideas and convert them into uh, business units which are profitable and which go such hard scale uh, in operation. So this is what I'm trying to understand. Like, uh, what has your journey to inspire been from uh, taking it to an abstract idea to something so inspiring? Um, thank you for that question, firstly. You know, I really, really appreciate it. I'm sorry you had to walk all the way from there uh, to actually ask that question. Um, but uh, I guess, well, the funny part is uh, me and Swayam actually drew, drew up this idea when we were uh, on a scuba diving course with a couple of friends from Flim. And, um, you know, we were, we were diving at Andaman when uh, I guess there was this huge school of plastic that actually washed up uh, right above us. And um, that's when we actually got to, you know, start to think as to, you know, what impact we actually have on, on our plan planet and as to how we can actually reduce that over time. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it first started off with research as to, uh, you know, what brands actually do exist. You know, is there a market for it? And uh, when we realized that there is a market for it, but there isn't much acceptability because of the price, we thought that we'd actually take it on as a challenge to, you know, market it in such a, such a way that it actually becomes something desirable to, to the masses or, you know, over time actually uh, gets you to start thinking about your choices that you are making today and uh, potentially move you one step at a time. Um, but it, it was more of, you know, actually propagating a lifestyle that people should take up uh, more than anything and that actually started to get us going. And um, we've learned a lot over the way. I'm not going to lie. Um, some, some, most of them being downs, uh, to actually take you and you know make you understand that you know the world is not as black and white as it seems and yeah it pushes you down but then I guess uh, you know as as and when you start working on it you, your love for it increases and um, you just start pushing on to it even more. Uh, but thank you for thank that you question. Sir. I appreciate it. Hello, hello, Deepak. Hello, Swayam. Hi there. Next question for you is how do you identify the brands that you that wanted to be a part of your community that you have created, the ecosystem that you have created. So, yeah, I'll just, I'll just take that. Sure, sure. Um, we actually, you know, the inspiration for Aspire was actually derived from a previous experience I had back in Berlin uh, with a brand called Stay, uh, which is also a similar e commerce marketplace for sustainable goods. Um, what we realized there is, I mean, what I what I realized through that experience, and then of course talking with Deepak about it, and then you know we we sort of uh, realized this is something that's lacking in the Indian market currently, and we would love to, um, you know, have that address that in 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 a better way if if possible. Um, and then of course we that if we did our research, we found there are multiple there are multiple there are a couple of brands that that do exist, such as Brown Living, Sustain Card. These are a few examples of our competitors. Um, we try to uh, uh, study them to understand what they're doing. Um, and I guess what, what really helped us, uh, you know, drive our focus towards our criteria for filtering brands is to understand what exactly is sustainable. Because as you all know, sustainable has multiple definitions. People have their own ways of defining what sustainability is. But to us, we had, we, you know, Deepak and I actually had, you know, after a lot of intense research, we uh, finally narrowed it down to, to what sustainable means to us, which is um, the five core values that Deepak spoke about earlier. Um, when we when we reach out to a brand, firstly we do our own research whether they're actually in the truest way. Uh, you know, if it's a fashion brand, do they use materials uh, like organic cotton, bamboo, helm, tensile, linen? If yes, they they tick the first box, and then of course we approach them, and then we set up a call if they're interested as well. Once they're interested, we have a second filter, which is again an interview with the founders or with the team of that particular brand, where we further understand their supply chain, further understand what they're doing in in the whole sustainable model and how they're sustainable. With, the, with their practices. And uh, if they do agree to be onboarded, uh, we then have a third layer of filter, which is two questionnaires that we've developed internally within our team, uh, which sort of goes, go, goes ahead and talks more about and ask them questions such as what your supply chain processes look like, where you're sourcing your, uh, you know, your, your material from, uh, how your working conditions are, how much you're paying your workers, um, how, how transparent are you when it comes to equal working conditions as well. So things are like that which which sort of define the overall umbrella of what sustainability is, rather than just focusing on how you know, or rather another word uh, which which a lot of people confuse is eco-friendly versus sustainable. What we're trying to do is build a sustainable community which includes eco-friendly products. Whereas when you talk about only only eco-friendly, it it sort of doesn't 
include the, uh, the bigger picture, which also is a lot gonna do with your sourcing, a lot gonna do with your working conditions, uh, you know, uh, the, the whole the whole umbrella and the whole cohort. So um, yeah, I think we have various filters, which we, we use to identify the brands that you do wanna onboard. I spoke about fashion. Uh, when it comes to beauty, the only onboard brands that are completely vegan and cruelty free. Um, and you know, again, the same three sort of, we have different questionnaires, by the way, for, 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 for each category. So um, I think, yeah, that's, that's how we sort of, you know, firstly understand which brands to onboard. We, we see what's lacking in our, on our marketplace, what sort of products are lacking. And if, there's, if there is a solution to those products and we approach those brands, if of course they agree to be onboarded is then we take them through the entire process like I spoke about. What do you have your take on and do you think the consumers in India are truly devoted to this cause of sustainability and sustainable fashion and they're willing to pay the premium for it? Uh, what is your experience in this fire? Well, um, so to answer the first question, I guess there is a market for it. However, it's very, very small <clears throat> because not a lot of us are really, you know, uh, mindful about what, what steps we're taking on a daily basis, you know. Uh, if if it's raining, we'd rather still take our car than you know maybe use use a shared car and so on and so forth. So I guess there are a lot of these small little actions that we take on a daily basis that do have its own extraneous impacts. Um, but uh, are we really mindful? I, I guess if I had to put it down to numbers, I'd say one percent of India's total population is mindful. The rest of us are more cost minded than anything. And uh, you know the first thing that we would do is even if we see a really really fancy. Uh, you know, organic t-shirt, we'd say, okay, yeah, that's 1,200 bucks. I don't think I'm going to get it. Um, so has, uh, is there a market for it in the world? There is a market for it in the world. And will there be a market for it three to four years down the line? It would be because it would become a question of more conserving what we have already than actually being a sustainability question. So um, yeah, there is a market, but it has to be, you know, like, like we've, you know, basically mentioned throughout our, our talk, uh, the whole point of sustainability right now is to raise awareness to actually make consumers aware of what is actually going into each of their products and how they can make a conscious choice, basically. That, that answers my question. Thanks. My pleasure. Uh, yeah, so uh, talking about uh, cost-sensitive uh, consumers, I just wanted to ask, sustainability is very important. But for 99%, cost is still the main factor. So uh, what can you do to make the products more affordable, the sustainability uh, more affordable? So, yeah, okay. this, I think this, this is more of a demand supply, uh, you know, issue that we're trying to address. If, uh, you know, if there is a bigger demand. So currently the issue with sustainability is sustainable materials, like say your pineapple leather, which is peanut X or or various alternatives to your actual leather which make a product vegan and plant-based like there are there's cactus leather there's apple leather there's pineapple leather there's you know uh, grape leather there's various sort of plant-based leather that there are but to source those materials it, it comes at a big cost which is which is again because there isn't a big demand for it currently so you know if, if there is a bigger demand for a particular product this cost automatically it goes or all comes down to economies of scale as well right like if you if you um, have a bigger demand for something if you produce in bulk the cost for it to, to manufacture comes down as well which is again what we're trying to do is create that demand what we're trying to do initially of course is to spread more awareness because we believe that the problem in India especially currently is that people aren't very educated ob about sustainability or or may not know the ill effects of living an unsustainable lifestyle currently or they may be taking taking it for granted so what we truly believe is first and foremost is what we need to do is create a more, uh, you know, educative sort of platform for people to come and see um, and learn more over on how they could be living a sustainable lifestyle, which, which in a way is, is again, goes hand in hand to what you're doing right now. There are multiple alternatives out there. It is just about creating that demand. It is once and once that demand does come in, there'll be more brands coming in. Once more brands come in, you know, it, it's a cycle and there's, there's going to be more products being sourced. There's going to be more, uh, you know, uh, more products being made. And then of course, uh, once, once the demand comes in, like I said earlier, it's a demand supply issue where uh, when there's a bigger supply as well, the cost eventually does come down. 
but um, you know it's 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 unfortunate that currently it does come at a big cost and not everyone can afford it not even 1% according to me of india 1% are mindful but not even the 1% uh, would would sort of are are educated enough to learn and know more about what sustainable uh, you know fashion for example is or or how organic cotton for example is is beneficial over just your normal cotton so um, it does it does unfortunately come at a cost and hopefully collectively once once you know we we do spread across the message once we do you know educate uh, our consumers as well as everyone out there uh, the the cost eventually in the future do come down and everyone can you know live a sustainable lifestyle i guess um just to add on to that as well um from a more commercial perspective what we are also doing is actually for going a lot of our commission percentage that we do take on from a brand in order to deep discount over and above what is already priced to a consumer so um what what we are trying to do is in order to raise brand awareness you know give you that extra discount in order for you to actually start you know using the products you know become evangelists at the end of the day and actually spread the word about what sustainability can can offer and over time you know as people become like flex like mom mentioned you know as people become more brand aware become more brand conscious uh, or you know for that matter even supply chain uh, you know uh, loyal for that matter i guess then we can push a lot more towards the consumer than is currently Um, guys, there are some sustainability problems. Does your organization face? Um, I guess issues of sustainability. Uh, we're, we're actually, I, I guess, one of the most carbon neutral brands there are, uh, considering the fact that we are all working from home. So we don't have an office space. So we don't have you know water wastage. We don't have electricity wastage, and so on and so forth. Uh, so in that sense, we're a carbon neutral company. But um, I, I guess. in terms of sustainability issues i think our main issue is our transportation uh cuz transport is one of the biggest carbon uh you know uh, emitters in the world and to actually have that uh, come down to a net zero uh requires a lot of investment and uh, that is something that we are trying to do through you know uh, collaborations with a lot of companies uh that are in the space uh you know to help with carbon avoidance and carbon sequestration projects where we actually invest in them to um, you know offset any carbon that we do emit through transportation and actually put that back into the environment so i guess that would be our number one uh, you know sustainability issue and something that we are trying to address and um, i guess in terms of the whole market on the whole uh, there isn't you know a fair certificate to date that actually encapsulates all your sustainability scores um, so what we are on the lookout for is you know to create like a central framework that could be um you know actually licensed and then you know provided to you know companies so that they can actually portray as to how sustainable their actual you know production and at the end of the day the final product is okay we have some questions on zoom so sure. the first one is which areas of india are you getting maximum maximum engagement from on your digital content and conversion from yeah so i think um um even i spoke about demographics it said we're targeting more tier 1 and tier 2 cities and we're getting most of our you know conversions and traffic from tier 1 cities such as mumbai and bangalore i think these are the two cities that um, you know initially of course since also through word of mouth through friends and family uh, since i'm from bombay deepak's from bangalore these are two cities that also gained maybe a lot more traction um and it also happens to be more of the educated uh, cities that we're looking at currently however we're also getting more uh, traction lately from chennai from hyderabad and also from uh, already mentioned bangalore so yeah chennai hyderabad bangalore and mumbai i think these are four cities that that we're sort of getting most um, you know traction and conversions from but of course there's a bigger market out there there's cities like delhi the cities like pune uh, you know which which we still have to sort of tap and you know maybe get get more uh, word out there as well okay next question is as everyone is getting environment conscious and uh, conscious about climate change so do you think that there are uh, any government initiatives or government support to the companies like aspire creating awareness about environment um while while there are initiatives and subsidies for companies that actually take it on themselves to you know uh, avoid i mean actually use carbon sequestration projects and actually become net neutral get those carbon credits and eventually sell it for a you know higher price 
um, there aren't any subsidies for you know uh, marketplaces or brands per se that are actually involved in sustainable trade or sustainable practices. Uh, and it's actually the need of the hour, you know, and um, considering that we are working with only Indian brands, um, sustainability still, you know, is, is a lot cheaper when produced in Bangladesh and China for the same attributable reasons that it was 40 years ago, uh, prior to globalization. So um, while, while there is a dire need for it, there aren't any initiatives as of date that could actually, you know, push into the sustainable fa fashion space. But if we look at sustainable uh, food, if you look at uh, food solutions for that matter, or, you know, water solutions over time, then there are a lot of initiatives and grants that the government does give uh, in, you know, for innovations that are in the space. Uh, none that we're aware of in the sustainable fashion space, but if you guys are aware, please, please do let us know. Sorry, you can't hear you. Is he audible? Um, no. You can't hear him. So, hello, Deepak and Swayam. Uh, yeah. I really like the startup idea, so congratulations for that. Sure, I thanks. just have one small doubt. Uh, so, as you all know that H&M uh, uses sustainable products and all their products, I mean, up to 65% are sustainable. So, how do you all plan on competing with them? So, uh, that's a really, really good question and a really valid question. Now, um, it still boils down to the fact of fast fashion. So, uh, you know, if, if I have a trend that's on a, you know, uh, on a runway or a, or a fashion show and I end up producing thousands or two thousands of pieces of it um, at really cheap rates, that's still, even if I'm using sustainable material, uh, which is organic cotton, I'm still, you know, buying into the whole fallacy of, you know, cheap, uh, cheap wages and over time, you know, a lot of wastage of material and uh, a lot of uh, affluence actually entering the water because, well, it's the cheapest way to discard uh, pollutants. Uh, so they aren't really our competition. Uh, so if, if you do look at our website, about 70% of uh, the brands that are on our website are actually made to order brands. And what I mean by that is the minute you order that product is when it starts getting made. So there aren't, there isn't a question of, you know, huge supply chains. There aren't any questions of, you know, uh, wastage of uh, cut material or raw material of dyes for that matter, because it's, it's a one-off made product or it's a, it's made just as, as you order it. So um, I, I wouldn't really say they are our competitors, but I would say that, you know, uh, with the whole introduction of their line, they're actually promoting what we stand to promote, which is you know, uh, materials coming out in the open, but obviously at a higher rate as of right now, because we don't have, well, the, the capability to uh, produce about tens of millions of, you know, um, products at a time. Also, just to add on, uh, like you mentioned, the so H&M isn't our main, I mean, isn't a competitor at all, because firstly, because, uh, you know, we're a marketplace to start off with, while we are coming up with our own products and we're trying to introduce more innovative products, which, which sort of are in a lack in, this, in the current market, um, H&M, whereas is completely just one brand that, you know, is more D2C, whereas uh, we're also trying to get into more B2B. Um, but as you mentioned rightly about the whole fast fashion angle, I would recommend whoever is interested in this space, maybe look up this website called goodonyou.eco. I'll just note it down in the chat. Um, they, they do their research really well. They sort of rate the brands that, uh, you know, they rate all, all sort of fashion brands out there. And then they have their sort of ratings on how sustainable a brand is. Um, and no matter the materials they use, as Deepak mentioned, the working conditions and, and their wages and, you know, just a lot of other issues which, which sort of don't make them as sustainable as, as they should and they're still a fast fashion brand. I'll, I'll just note it down on the, on the chat. Thing. So, uh, how would you define the difference between uh, conservation and sustainability? And is your uh, business model devoted to either in particular? Well, I'll, I'll take that. So, um, conservation, if I had to define it, would be 
taking precautionary measures because something is already or is to be extinct or is close to be extinct for that matter. Sustainability, on the other hand, is a lifestyle change. It's something that you do on a daily basis to actually create that awareness around you as well as to actually start living a lifestyle where you're not really worried about what, what would happen if you continue doing this. Um, we are more inclined towards sustainable uh, you know, uh, mindset or the sustainable lifestyle. And the reason for that being that um, if we start to live precautionary lifestyles, then you know, uh, we end up abusing that power and we end up using it a lot more because uh, us as humans are very rebellious. You tell someone not to do something and they end up doing the exact opposite. Uh, a sustainable lifestyle, on the other hand, is something where, you know, you're trying to change really, really small steps. You know, it could be as small as uh, carrying like a, you know, a, a reusable bottle with you rather than using single use plastic for your, you know, when you do go out or carrying a bag with you instead of using a plastic bag that you get from, you know, um, those shops that you go to. And um, so a sustainable lifestyle, on the other hand, is, is a choice that you make uh, rather than actually, you know, make, you know, putting rules and regulations into place to say you can't do this or you can't do that. While it is a need, I guess a sustainable lifestyle and a sustainable uh, mindset is, is, a, is of the need of the hour rather than precautionary measures. Because, uh, sorry, sorry, just to add on to that, because um, when, you, when you do reach a point where you start putting precautions and people don't really understand why they're doing it, but if you start leading one, then you would know once it does come into play as to what you're supposed to do or why it's in place for that matter. Are we open to questions from Almira as well? Absolutely. Hi, Deepak. Hi, Swayam. How are you guys Hey, doing? what's up? How's it going? Good, good, good. good. Nice so, I, sorry, I've joined in a little late, um, but I wanted to ask, um, and I've been following your um, organization oblique effort uh, on LinkedIn for quite some time. Wanted to understand how you're taking this these problems to scale. I believe that somebody might have asked this question, but I'll just ask again, how do you take this as Deepak very rightly articulated an effort to change how you generally behave and behavioral change model is something that's the most difficult even while I am attempting things say in education in Punjab. How do you see things moving on to scale? Yeah. So, Thank um, you. you know what? Firstly, you know, great to hear from you after so long. Um, I, I guess the, the solution to this is two-pronged as well. Um, what we are trying to do on an elementary level is trying to uh, identify sectors within, within the industry which are currently very, very polluting. So if you take the hospitality industry, for example, um, you know, every one of us would have used those plastic, uh, you know, uh, sliders that you get in each of your rooms and, you know, found it really, really comfy and taken it back home or used and throw, thrown it. Now, because of a sanitization, I mean, a sanitation issue, uh, you know, hotels have to incinerate them or have to throw them out. So I, I guess solutions to this, where we actually, you know, start introducing eco-friendly slippers, which are biodegradable in nature or can be reused for that matter, uh, is a solution that we're actually trying to look for and actually trying to, you know, uh, pitch to a lot of the, the hotels and resorts all, all around India for right now. Um, so I guess that that is the first bit of awareness that we are trying to bring, bring in within the industry itself. In terms of the, the second question from a more consumer point of view, um, education through blogs is what we're trying to primarily, uh, you know, push out through right now. However, we are looking at potential collaborations with, you know, educational institutions as well as uh, people within the space who could actually, you know, help us create a curriculum of sorts or a small little course of sorts where, you know, you know, this can be actually imbibed by, by the general public for free of cost. And uh, so that actually educates them about what actually entails sustainability and how actually, you know, because th there's a, uh, one thing that I did come across is the dire need of LCA scientists, which is nothing but a life cycle assessment scientist, uh, which actually boiled down um, carbon emissions right from gate to gate. So um, there's a dire need for them. And, you know, it's very, very expensive in India. So if we have a lot more people who are in interested in this space and actually do take it up, I think it will actually benefit a lot of companies that are, that are you know, coming up as well as provide that awareness as well as education that we're trying to put out. Also, just to add on, uh, also, hi, Sadab, nice to see you. Just to add on, um, in terms of our marketing efforts, so initially what we've sort of tried to do is talk more about sustainability in a way that we're pushing out, okay, this product is consumes 10x less water than this product, so buy this product. Uh, what we've noticed is, again, like Deepak mentioned, if you tell someone to do this, they'll do the opposite, right? So we're just trying to understand consumer behavior and psychology as well. And what we've realized is rather than focusing on that, what we're trying to do is say with sweatshirt like this, 
what we're going to do is to talk to people in a more in a more sort of uh, you know a, a general way where we're saying a more generic way where we're saying this t-shirt is very comfortable this t-shirt is you know um, you know feels good on your skin it's very light it, these are the benefits of this product plus an additional benefit is that it's sustainable so i think this is something that's helping us more than the first method that i described as well which is again uh, comes to the whole your, your question on how exactly we see it scaling i think uh, you know we've learned we've learned various sort of uh, mistakes from, from the mistakes that we made not mistakes others learned from what we've sort of analyzed and studied and done and we're trying to just you know make sure we we learn from that and and uh, you know understand our consumers better i think that's something that that is a challenge for all brands across the world and you know that's 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 something that we're really really um, you know always analyzing and studying great thank you so much i think this is a very very special thing to see both deepak and soyam they've been, they've been presenting in the classrooms uh, that you all are sitting uh, and really happy to see this happening back at you thank you yeah the classrooms look a lot more fancy but yeah yeah, yeah. i mean chanak is quite <laughs> fancy but yeah i mean really happy to see this yeah thank you thanks it thank you thank you swayam and deepak for your valuable time we are sure that uh, now we are more aware about sustainable solutions and everyone present here is more aware of how they should think and keep their minds open to, to come for the solutions we would like to thank faculty alumni students staffs and our well wishers for attending the session thank you professor priya joshi ma'am for joining the session thanks to our vice chancellor professor dr shan kamdar sir registrar dr virendra sharma sir id department travel desk program office branding and communication department team student affairs flame and all the club members last but not least thanks alumni relation cell flame alumni relation office for conducting this session thank you yeah i just want to say thank you once again to, to everyone who helped this make possible it's great to see a few familiar names across and you know thank you guys for joining and thank you for supporting us and thank you for those who engaged as well just like to thank flame once again for having us and you know giving us this platform to to speak more about aspire and and just want to let you guys know as well the students there if there's any sort of questions you guys have or you know any sort of further collaboration or discussion that you would like to have please reach out to us whenever and we'll be more than happy to sort of have a discussion and engage with you guys But yeah, thanks, thanks a lot, and thanks everyone for for joining in. Thank you, everybody. Hope you have a great evening. Thank you. Hi, Deepak and Soyam. I cannot leave this session without saying hi to you guys. So How are you doing? Um, Such a wonderful session, and I wish you all the very best. Hope to see you very, very soon and flame. As you know, that Kitty Cat is going to happen. We want to have both of you back here. Absolutely, we wouldn't miss it. Thank you, thank you for joining us. So nice to see you. With so nice to see Priya, ma'am, as well. Hi. Thank you. It's wonderful to see you both. Amazing. Very proud of you and congratulations all the best. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Meet you on campus sometime soon. Absolutely. Very soon. Thank you so much. Bye guys. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Bye-bye.